There he is. Alphonse, it's too soon for you to die. We aren't done with you yet. There's still so oh, no. much work we have in store for you. Episode 47, Emissary of Darkness. This should be a fun one. No sadness at all. Excuse me. Is this place called Kanama? Oh, he's looking for Hohenheim. Nice. Mr. Ho. Mr. Ho again. You've got some company. This should be good. Let it all out. Edward, I didn't think... <laughs> That felt good. All right, we got that out of the way. Oh, you could have at least warned me you were about to slug me. I uh, see you've made a new group of friends. We're not. It's more like we're all in the same sinking ship. <laughs> Look, we need to talk. The promised day is tomorrow. Yeah, you really do. Fair enough. I'll tell you everything. Good. Tell us, Owenheim. I was worried this might be more difficult for you to accept than it was for Alphonse. No, tell us! <laughs> Wait, you told Al about this? If you want to use me to get your bodies back, you can. Are you crazy? Wow. Maybe you are a living philosopher's stone, but I'm not gonna sacrifice innocent souls! It's our fault we lost our bodies! Oh, I see. You told them the Xerxes story, not about the plan. Yeah, it does have to be difficult for Ed to hear that, because it's such a subversion of what he thought this whole time. I feel like with really intense feelings, there's a momentum to them. It takes a while to slow that down and reverse it. Like what Hohenheim's saying is that he's going to sacrifice himself for his kids if, if they want, if he has to. Which is huge. I mean, that's a huge thing to say. That is totally different from the way Ed perceives him and the way he's always presented Hohenheim as being like this cold, uncaring figure who abandoned them. So that's got to be a huge shock. Not only to learn the truth, but also to realize you've been wrong. So wrong. There will be a solar eclipse tomorrow. The moon. Another eclipse. I need you to help me. Help you? <laughs> now look here. I'm going to stop that bearded bastard. But I'm not doing it because you want me to help you. Our best chance at beating this guy is to team up. And that's the only reason I'm even talking to you right now. Okay. <laughs> you need some time to digest all this. It's a lot. That's fine with me. It doesn't matter what your reasons are as long as you'll still fight alongside me. Granny asked me to give you mom's message. Words. Yeah. Sorry I couldn't keep my promise. But I'm dying first. <laughs> As far as Ed's perspective is concerned, that was probably the most humanizing reaction Hohenheim could have had. Because if anyone understands the pain of losing Trisha, it's Ed. I mean, that's what launched his whole life, basically. And now he sees that's something Hohenheim shares. So that's got to be a huge shift in perspective. Hohenheim, I think, is playing this really well. Like, he's not expecting anything from Ed. And he understands where the anger is coming from. And he's not bitter about it. He accepts it, which is really cool. And so Ed will come around. I don't know if it'll happen before Hohenheim dies. I'm guessing he's going to die. Just because, you know, all this talk about wanting to die and his forced immortality, him being a philosopher's stone, him wanting to help his kids. I sort of I feel like that's an inevitability and I just hope that Ed can figure that out figure out who his father really is before that happens it sounds like you've had a rocky past with him but he doesn't strike me as the type who'd abandon his wife you know the guy must have had his reasons so why don't you give him a chance to explain yeah! Shut <laughs> up! did you ever think that I've got my reasons oh yeah let's hear him then you're just stubbornly holding a grudge Damn, therapy time with Mr. Lion and Mr. Gorilla it's funny how the chimeras end up growing on you too everyone grows on you in the show except for Yoki <laughs> Such a whirlwind of emotions. Why does he always appear whenever Ed is having a moment? He's always ready to smug it up anytime <laughs> Ed is thinking about something deep. Never misses an opportunity. It's like he appears out of thin air just to harass him. It's just, he's not what I was expecting. Right. Yeah, it's got to be a huge shock. To be fair, it's what none of us were expecting. Someday, I'm going to be a wrinkled old monster myself. So today, we're going to take this picture and I'll be able to remember us all together smiling. Smiling and crying. Will you wait for me? Of course. I'll be right here. It's tragic. I'm sorry, Trisha. I couldn't keep my promise. Tomorrow, Trisha. Definitely seems like he's planning to die. But it's been a long road for Hohenheim. It's been a 400 plus year journey. But in some ways he's really fortunate because he has a clear purpose in life. He knows what he can do to help. And also, it seems like he's had time to make peace with a lot of things that were troubling him. Like this, I feel like is some sort of making peace with the loss of his wife, finally. And he's also been able to make peace with his sons to some extent. Even if Ed never comes around, I feel like he's conducted himself in such a way that Ed now knows who he really is, which to me as Hohenheim, I would feel like that was sufficient. I wouldn't need Ed to like be super loving, but I would just want to set the record straight. And I feel like he's done that. And what exactly is that for? Whoa. 
Come on, what's wrong with what you're wearing now? That doesn't seem flashy to you. He has great taste, all right? I don't want to hear it. There's a pretty good chance this is going to be the last battle we ever fight. I want to do it in style. That looked like respect, even from greed. I'm thinking you'd be better off going your own way before things start to get too serious. That hey, keeps doing on. this. That isn't your call to make. Yeah. Not like we have anything better to do. My animal instincts tell me something good's coming, so I'll ride this thing out with you. They're good people. Are you asking me why I've decided to return to Central? I'm not telling you, kid. Interesting. What could it be? What kind of trick is this? No, 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 no. This is wrong. Oh man, you freaked me out there. This is all wrong. How have you been, Al? I'm glad to see you. Oh no! This is a trap. Hey, uh, are you sure you're feeling all right, Al? Good instincts. What do you mean? Well, you, you seem a little... Ed! Ling? Get away from him! Oh, this is gonna hurt Ed so deep. And Ed doesn't know pride at all, right? How pathetic that you share your consciousness with a human. Your soul couldn't be Whoa. any weaker. Old metal Damn. Just as he's already in Resolute and everything. This is why you gotta stick together. That's why you can't separate. Nothing good can come out of the brothers separating. The Fuhrer's remains haven't turned up yet. He's definitely alive. Bradley might be laying low on purpose. I don't seem to have much choice. I suppose I'll just have to let Colonel Mustang have the biggest slice of Central Pie. If Colonel Mustang or General Armstrong try to make their move now, every soldier in Central will be ordered to retrieve their treasonous head. They'll take the fall as enemies of the state while General Grumman will heroically come riding in on a white horse. It wouldn't surprise me if that's what the sly old fox is plotting. Is that Miles suspecting Grumman of trying to take power? That's my brother. My oldest brother, I guess you'd say. A homunculus? The most dangerous homunculus, probably. In Al's body. How dare you disguise yourself as my brother! Who said this was a disguise? This is, without a doubt, your brother's actual body. Where is Al's consciousness right now? I guess with his body? I guess Ed doesn't really have much stakes. I mean, his life is not in danger, I mean. The stakes for him are Al. But greed is a different story. Greed could die. As could Mr. Gorilla and Mr. Lion, who I've grown strangely attached to. You bastard! Yeah, that hurts. I've got to make sure and keep him away from the slums. Very kind. A barrier's not gonna work against him. That's for damn sure. That was close. Now then, I've captured your friend, Full Metal. Ready to give up? That was easy. There's a power comparison there because we just saw Greed fight Bradley and lose, but you know he was more equal. Pride just took him out in seconds. You're not going to make me threaten the lives of the slum dwellers too, are you? Smart. You knew exactly what Ed was thinking. True to form. Yeah. He always goes straight for the cheap shot in order to get what he wants. What do you do with your Ed? I think it's about time I start winning some of these fights for a change. <laughs> Was it a warning? He turned out the lights. That's genius. Because pride is a shadow, right? Greed. That's so clever. Is it you, Heinkel? It's me. What happened to the power? Pride can still hear, though. He kept close to the edge of the shadows from the forest. His actual body's probably just beyond those trees. His body? So he's not inside the armor? No. He's got a special container that he uses when he's traveling around. Hmm. What kind of container? Salim. A Salim container. That actually clears something up for me, because we've seen the greed has to be in a container, right? But we've also seen Salim existing out in the world. But Salim is the container. That's pretty cool. They can smell him, though, right? I don't know if you can do this, though. You'd be different if you were an actual child, but I know what you are! And not only that, 
Oof. My animal instincts are screaming at me. They're telling me to kill you. This monologue. You kill me. Let's get out of here for the time being. I'm not gonna leave. What about Al? Yeah, you like can't that? do that. I know how worried you've got to be. But what if we get close to him and it turns out to be a trap? We've got to stick close to one another until Heinkel's done with pride. We don't want to accidentally attack each other. How is he even capable of finding us? Did Father give him some new ability? <laughs> oh no. Get down now! Right, they were together. Damn, we just bit that tree in half. I also smell someone I never smelled before. And they smell tasty. It's all you. Go for it. <laughs> oh, he's a homunculus, by the way. How do you Good expect to me to fight a monster like that? Mr. Lion's doing it. <laughs> he's actually holding his own. Found it. Did he just hit Ed? Were we sticking close to avoid attacking each other? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Greed. What, Ling? Switch with me. I can detect the presence nice. of the Nice. When I'm the one in control. They're making me mad. All I want to do is eat. But you won't let me eat you, and I'm getting hungrier. <laughs> so what a thing to say. To oh, here we go. I said something bad. Yeah. Bad? Good instincts. It's good animal instincts. <laughs> What's coming this way? I felt this presence before. Will you freaks tell me what the hell you're talking about? Hello? Normal guy here. I can't see in the dark. Is that the way I think it is? What happened? Stay down, kid. Is there something else out there? I'm not sure, but I think it might. It is. I'm thinking it's Lanfan, but I didn't know she could move that fast. I know. It is her, right? Nice, with the new auto mail. That's so cool. I was wondering when she was going to come back. I'm glad to see you're okay. I was wondering when you'd find me. Lan Fan. She looks jacked. Damn it. I also was wondering about her, because it was a long time ago that she went off trying to get her arm fixed. Or arm... Repaired her arm back, whatever it was. <laughs> I didn't know she was that talented, but Lanfan seems like she's the fastest of them all. It's the auto mail. Actually, there is something about that, right? Like we have seen references to auto mail and speed. Ed seemed to have gotten faster when he got his uh, his winter arm. No, no, end scene. Real... Man, I've been so spoiled lately. I don't like that. I'd even accept the Roy Mustang behind the back note burning. Anything. So in the last bunch of episodes, right, it's been all this tension rising, and now we're getting, like, actual clashes. Things are getting a little bit too heated, for comfort, I guess, on the homunculi side and the Bradley side. The plotting and scheming seems to have sort of run its course, and now it's time for things to go down. I really like Pride and Gluttony as a team. They're so different from each other, but they complement each other so well. Gluttony is like this child. Pride is very similar to the homunculi in the flask, and is highly intelligent and is highly in control. But then their different skills, their fighting skills, happen to complement each other in this episode with the, the darkness. Speaking of Pride, I don't think I appreciated before how well thought out his whole being is, his power is, I should say. There are some really cool ideas to him, like the whole container thing. Like, Salim is the container. When that clicked, that was really cool. So it ends up being this really cool villain concept. I mean, that's not even talking about the aesthetic, which is beautiful. And the character and like, Pride is such a cool villain. And then aside from the action, there's also the great scene with Ed and Hohenheim, which I really liked. Hohenheim is such a softy. <laughs> what that must feel like for Ed after all the feelings and pent up frustration he's had about his father to see him cry like that over, over their mother. We went through it too, to an extent, right? Like we saw Hohenheim initially through Ed's eyes and it was not the most flattering depiction, obviously. But then we have the benefit of seeing things through Hohenheim's eyes directly. And we also don't have a lifetime of like father trauma <laughs> like Ed does. But putting myself in Ed's shoes, it's a shock. And I definitely understand why he wouldn't come around immediately. I understand why it's it's not going to be easy for him to change his thinking about it. Or even if he does conceptualize it in some way, right? Even if he does reflect on it and think like, maybe Hohenheim's not so bad after all. I feel like there's still going to be a momentum to his behavior, like his outward behavior, and he's going to be reluctant to trust Hohenheim. Once you've been cultivating a certain idea of someone or a certain image of someone for a really long time, it can be very difficult to accept any evidence to the contrary, because it's sort of locked in in that way. I mean, I feel like someone who was not as mature as Ed has shown he is might even still be hateful of Hohenheim, even knowing what he now knows. But one thing I really like about that is I like that Hohenheim 
seems to be at peace about it. He's not really asking for anything from Ed. And to me, that feels like a very wholesome approach to the whole thing. Understanding Ed and let him be where he is, but then desiring to help them without any expectations. I think that speaks really well of him and shows where his heart really is. Like his heart really is about just doing right, doing right by his kids and by the world. So it would be great for me to see more of Ed and Hohenheim, but I would also understand if that just didn't happen and if like their appreciation or Ed's renewed appreciation for Hohenheim was left unspoken. I'm interested to see how that goes. I hope the three of them have a chance to reunite because I think that would be beautiful. But that's sort of up in the air now too because Al, I mean, who knows what's going on there. But anyway, that's the end of episode 47. I'll see you guys next time for episode 48, which I might watch right now.